Mike, um, obviously added a lot of pieces in the off season. I know it's early, but especially as you worked with these guys through the summer, what are some of the things you think you guys will be able to do a little bit differently when you bring in a Miles Rice, a Kanan Carlisle, a Luke Goody, and Omar Ballo? Well, we're a little bit deeper than we've been in the past years with our ball club. Um, you know, we still have an inside presence with Ballo and Malik and LT. We can post some as well. But it, <clears throat> we got guards now that are a lot quicker than we've had in the past. You know, X was probably the quickest guard we've had since we've been here. Um, but I think Miles and and Kane and bring a, a totally different look. Um, and then with Goody, um, Bryson being, you know, the young freshman who's, you know, very talented, uh, still got to learn the college game, but has played extremely well, I think, this summer for us. Um, um, but Goody brings us some shooting. Um, we can get Gallo back and get him back in the form that he shot the ball f a couple years ago. That will help, and McKenzie sh has shot the ball well, and Miles and Kanan can make shots. So, I mean, it just brings us a, a totally different look, and and we're still in the process of putting it all together. Yeah, Mike, um, last year you mentioned a lot just how new you all were, even you know around like mid January with so many new faces this year, I'm wondering what you feel like you learned last year as far as maybe easing that acclimation process. Well, again, uh, you know I, I don't really want to focus on last year because it's behind us, and you know I'm moving forward um, and kind of focus on the players that we have coming in this to this season. Um, you know, this summer was a lot of work that we had to put in because we we had six guys that left our ball club and one to the draft, two that graduated and and three to the portal. So there was a lot of work that had to be done this this summer uh, to fill our, our roster. And um, I thought we did a pretty good job of uh, putting a roster together. Uh, our summer play was great. Uh, guys were on time and did what was expected of them. And, um, and it's been a carryover to our fall play. So, you know, it's, it's a lot of work, man, when you add pieces and, and all the things you got to do on both ends of the ball uh, to get better. It, it's, it's a lot, it's time consuming and a lot of work that's got to be done. Morning, Coach, or good afternoon. Um, a number of recruiting prospects have said that they feel you guys are going to play much differently this year. What do you envision that looking like? Well, you know, the fact that we are a quicker team and I think we can hopefully shoot the three ball better and make free throws. Um, um, but I like to play a, a little bit quicker this year uh, where we're not – walking it up, you know, I mean, there were times we had fast break points that we made off of turnovers with our defense, but I like to play a little bit faster on makes. And, you know, that's something that we've been working on uh, since we put this team together this summer. Yeah, hey, Coach, do you see Umar Balo and Malik Renew as complementary players, or are they guys that you would like to have in different rotations, or is that just something you still need to figure out and tinker with as the season goes on? Well, again, I mean, Balo has shown that when you throw him the ball down there, he's a load. And Malik, you know, has, has graduated from his freshman year. I mean, he made a major jump last year. And, you know, he didn't shoot very many threes. Uh, he made a few, but, you know, he did a lot of his work around the bucket. And, you know, we've tried this summer to move him away from the bucket a little bit and play him uh, inside, out, and, and outside. And, and he's kind of held his own. His, his biggest challenge is going to be guarding smaller players at that position. But... You know, that's something that we've been working on when we, he has to match up against Mac, McKenzie and, and Goody in practice at the four spot. Alex, 
What what has stood out so far the most with with Miles Rice and just how he's looked early oh, through the summer and then just the the uh, the workouts so far this fall? His speed um, it changes the game uh, for us uh, along with Kanan and the fact that he can score the ball. Um, you know his biggest challenge right now is just really being a solid point guard and making sure he understands there are other players around him um, that can also help too. And, you know, that's that's a learning process for a lot of point guards when you're that young. Um, you got to include everybody and figure out how to make everybody happy when you got the ball in your hand. And it's just not him. I mean, it's, it's everybody who has the ball because we have a number of guys now that can – make plays with the basketball that helps you. Yeah, Coach, Do you uh, for, with Trey Galloway, do you anticipate him being ready for the opener, and how important has his leadership been through all the changes throughout the offseason? He's been great. He's just, you know, been spending time trying to get back healthy. Um, you know, he's been doing a lot of our conditioning work, um, He's not on the floor doing five-on-five five physical contact, but he's done drills and things of that nature. So we've kind of have brought him along slowly based on how he's feeling. Um, but we're hoping, I mean, we're open up next week. We're hoping that he's able to to bang a little bit and, and, and get back going and playing at a level where he played last season. Coach, kind of piggybacking off that a little bit. With so many newcomers, you know, having Trey and Anthony coming back, how, how vital is that to the success of the team, really? It, well, it's very important. Our seniors play a major role, in, and I've always believed that in college, you know, because they, they've been around the longest. You know, you we got a number of seniors now with Ballo and LT and um, Gallo and Anthony and Goody, you know what I mean? You know, we're going to have to lean on those guys to to show leadership and step up and play. Coach, obviously Gabe Cups had to step up a lot last season. How have you seen him grow through this offseason and just kind of continue to build off what he had started last season? Well, he's had a good summer program. Uh, he played well throughout the summer and he's come back this fall and he's played He's played well. He's He's holding his own. He's competitive. He's a, a kid that likes to compete. Uh, he's one of the first kids in the gym and one of the last to leave. So um, he's going to be in the thick of things. He's going to force Coach to have to play him. I mean, that's that's what it's about, competition. And, you know, we got plenty of it now. Mike, uh, is with Ja'Kai Newton, I guess, is he all recovered from everything last year? And I guess last year, you know, while he was rehabbing, what was he able to do to kind of develop as a player while he was on the side? Well, last year didn't get to do a whole lot, you know. So basically his learning sessions came in film and, um, and just watching practice. Um, and he still hasn't fully recovered. Uh, you know, he, he's had some good days. Um, but we can't consistently keep him in practice and on the basketball floor yet. And, you know, that's been frustrating for him, but, you know, he just got to keep working through it. That's all I can tell him. I, and medical people are telling him the same thing, that you just got to keep working until you can get back to where you can constantly stay on the floor and play basketball. That's, that's kind of been his hang-up right now. <clears throat> Mike, uh, Mackenzie Mbako played his best basketball t at the end of last year. What was the point of emphasis you gave him on in, in terms of improving his game in the offseason, and how does he kind of fit in with the mix of players that you brought in? Well, again, it's all about growth, man. You, you make a jump, there's always another jump in basketball that you got to try to reach. And, you know, he's played well this summer. You know, he's improved from last year. Uh, it took him some time, you know, I, which we thought it might take him some time. And and once he started to figure out some things, he became a pretty good player for us. Um, 
But this summer he's made another jump, in which I expect you know him to make that jump. So only time will tell uh, with all of our guys when we start playing um, where we go with our ball club. Coach, you kind of spoke about the depth of this roster. Um, is there a chance down the stretch that this rotation won't shrink but stay at maybe a 10, 11 guy rotation? Well, I wish I could play 12 guys. But, you know, that's just not the nature of this business in, in college basketball or NBA basketball. It's, if t it's tough playing, you know, 12 guys. I got away with it in New York when I, when I played 10 guys because we were deep. And we are deep this year. It's the only time will tell, man. I mean, if I could play 10 guys, I'm going to play them uh, and give everybody a shot to play. But they got to produce, you know. I mean, you just don't give minutes to be given them. You know, it's so competitive in practice right now that everybody's fighting to play. And I get it. You know, I mean, that's how it should be. So only time will tell. Mike, of your four rosters here, the uh, seems like this one is the most with uh, with plenty of guards and wings who can shoot it, but also run the floor. Um, with this makeup, will we see some some different kind of wrinkles with what you might want to try to do this year? Well, I like to get to some small ball this year, like I'd had in New York, uh, where Mac and Goody can play some four, and we can still be athletic enough out on the floor with one of the bigs to compete at a high level. And I've experimented with it a little bit this summer and this fall play, and um, and only time will tell, man. I mean, that's that's where I like to get to, you know, where we don't have to constantly pound the ball a lot. Just play some small ball and get up and down the floor some. Uh, Mike, talking about max development at the end of the year and then talking about that depth this year, uh, where do you find the time in the areas for some of these younger pieces like Gabe Cups and Bryson Tucker to break through the rotations and be able to develop throughout the year uh, even if there are a lack of reps? You know, I'm not saying Gabe and Bryson won't play. You know, they've been very competitive, you know, since we've had them. And Bryson has come in and showed that he belongs. So, I mean, it's – Hey, it's going to be tough. You know, I got a tough job this year, but that's okay, man. But at the end of the day, you know, I feel good about when I turn over there and putting somebody in the game that they're ready to come in and produce. And like I said, only time will tell. Mike, you talked about all the things that you'd like to do this season with the, all the new faces that have come in. What has been the, the, the most seamless way of uh, getting these guys together, but what has been the most challenging of getting to where you want to get with the uh, new additions? Well, it's not been a big challenge. I mean, we have did a lot of things this summer from a bonding standpoint that so these guys could kind of get to know and be around one another. And that's been probably the most we've done since we've been here. Um, and that helps. Uh, but it, it starts in practice. It starts in conditioning. Guys pushing one another and, and doing what's asked of them. And I have no really no complaints with this group. You know, I mean, they seem to like each other. And, and they all pushing for the same thing, man, to win basketball games. And uh, that's where it starts. Um, and in doing that, you know, I think we put ourselves in a nice position once the season starts to, to get off to a good season and see where it leads us. Coach, we know that you like to preach defense first. How have you seen this group this offseason come together on that end of the floor? Well, I'm going to always preach defense because um, I truly believe that's what wins games. It keeps you in ball games when you're struggling to score the basketball. Um, and that's been a big challenge. You know, I thought this summer our offense was so ahead of the defense because we hadn't put all of our things from a defensive standpoint in. And now that we're starting to put defense in, it's been a struggle for guys to really score, break loose and score. And, you know, it's kind of give and take, you know, either way. You know, you're going to have to build a good defensive team and offensively, you're going to have to be sufficient and enough to the point where you score the basketball. And I think we can do both. But 
only time will tell. We gotta, you know, we gotta make it work for us and keep working and practice and building it. Yeah, Mike, I know you've used Trey Galloway kind of in a few different ways, whether it's like running the point or playing off the ball. And I know you haven't seen him on the court in five on five, you mentioned. But um, with the new pieces you've added, where do you sort of see him fitting in? And is it good that he kind of has experience playing a few different spots? It's not going to change. You know, the way we play, you know, everybody's capable of handling the basketball. And we struggled in that area a little bit last season with certain players. And... Galloway can handle it, Carlisle can handle it, Miles can handle it, Goody's now even handling the basketball, Bryson can handle it, Gabe can handle the basketball, McKenzie's gotten better. So, you know, I mean, that's important, you know, when the style of play and how we want to play, everybody's got to feel comfortable in handling the basketball. You know, I have no problems with our bigs, you know, LT has never really handled it that much like he's doing now. Balo has handled it at two various stops, playing five out as well as posting the basketball. So I feel comfortable with him. And Malik has always been skilled enough, you know, to handle the basketball. So um, that helps when you're talking about building a good offense because you trust guys to try to make the right play. So we just got to make sure our system, once it's in play, everybody's doing what's asked of them.